To bring this project to a close, we'll still need to do two major components. Letting the player tap on a penguin to score, then letting the game end after a while. Right now, it never ends. So with pop-up time getting lower and lower, it means the game will become impossible after a few minutes. We're going to add a hit method to the wax lock class that will handle hiding the penguin. This needs to wait for a moment so the player still sees what they tapped. Move the penguin back down again, then set the penguin to be invisible again. We're going to use an SK action for each of those three things, which means we need to learn some new uses of the class. First, SK action dot wait for duration creates an action that waits for a period of time measured in seconds. Second, SK action dot run block will run any code we want provided as a closure. Block is Objective C's name for a swift closure. And third, SK action dot sequence takes an array of actions and executes them in order. Each action won't start executing until the previous one is finished. We need to use SK action run block in order to set the penguin's is visible property to be false rather than doing it directly, because we want to fit it into the sequence. Using this technique, it'll only be changed when that part of the sequence is reached. So here we are in waxlop.swift. I'll scroll down below the hide method and add a new method. I'll call this thing func hit. I will say immediately is hit is true. So we know this thing is hit. Next, we make our delay action by saying let delay equals sk action dot wait for duration. I'll do 0.25, so a quarter of a second. Next, we're going to hide the penguin by moving it back down again by saying let hide equals sk action dot move by. We we'll use move by x zero y minus eighty duration 0.5. So we'll move very slowly down compared to the regular hide method call. Then we'll say let not visible be equal to sk action dot run weak self in then self question mark dot is visible is equal to false. And now we want a sequence of those three things. So we'll say let sequence equals sk action dot sequence an array of delay, hide, not visible. And finally, char node dot run that sequence. Boom. Now with that new method in place, we can call it from the touches began method in game scene dot swift. This method needs to figure out what was tapped using the same nodes add method you saw in project 11. Find any touch, find out where it was tapped, then get a node array of all nodes at that point in the scene. We then need to loop through a list of all nodes that are at that point and see if they have the name char friend or char enemy and take the appropriate action. Rather than dump all the code in you at once, we'll start with a basic outline of touches began. So I'll go into game scene.swift. We have somewhere touches began from our skeleton code from earlier. We'll say first uh, guard let touch is equal to touches.first else return. So we couldn't read the touch that came in, just bail out immediately. Next, we'll say let location equals touch dot location in self. Where did they tap the screen? Third, we'll say let tap nodes equals nodes at the location that was tapped. So it'll give you all the SK nodes at that place. And now you can loop over them all and figure out if it's a friend or an enemy or something else. But of course, we don't care about something else. We just want friend or enemy. We'll say for node in tap nodes, if node.name is equal to char friend, then uh, they shouldn't whack this penguin. It's a good one. Else, uh, else if, sorry, else if node.name is equal to char enemy, then they should have whacked this one. So we have an else if rather than else. And that matters because we only care about friend or enemy. We don't care about the background or anything else in the game, just friend or enemy. So there's nothing complicated there. This is all to be known already. What is new is what comes in place of these two comments. They shouldn't have whacked this penguin and they should have whacked this one. This first comment marks the code block that we called if the player taps a friendly penguin, which is obviously against the point of the game. When that happens, we need to call the hit method to make the penguin hide itself, subtract five from the current score, then run an action that plays a bad hit sound. 
All that should only happen if the slot was visible and not hit. Now there's a problem. Our friend char node, this thing here, the friendly characters node, that's a sprite node that's inside a crop node, and the crop node is inside our wax slot class. And the wax slot class is the one that has is visible and is hit. Let's try and read the parent of the node that was tapped and then the parent of that parent and typecast that to be a wax slot. Now we can do this with a bit of navigation. We want to do it very, very carefully because of course the parent might not exist or it might not be a wax slot and similar. So we're going to say inside our loop, guard let wax slot be equal to node, the one that was just tapped, dot parent, which isn't any kind of SK node, question mark, the parent of that, so the grandparent of the tapped things, conditional typecast, wax slot, else, continue. So we're going to try and read the grandparent of the thing that was tapped. And if we can read that, we'll try and typecast it as a wax slot. And if that works, fine. Then we'll do our node check down here. But if it fails, which is basically every other kind of node in the game, then it will just ignore that one and go to the next tap node instead. So now we have the wax slot. We can replace this code here. They shouldn't have whacked this penguin. We can go back and say, was this thing visible or not? Was it hit or not? If, if it wasn't visible, then forget about it, move on to the next one. If it was hit, then forget about it, go to the next one. Otherwise, mark it as hit, run a code to subtract five from the score, and play the bad sound, the whackbad.caf file we imported earlier on. It's over here, this thing here. Play that immediately. So we can say, in place of that comment, or just below the comment perhaps, keep it in there, if not whack slot, dot is visible, then continue. So if it was hidden, bail out, go to the next penguin. And if wax slot dot is hit, continue. So if this thing has already been hit, don't let them hit it again and again and again, hit them just once and continue. Then we can say wax slot dot hit. So if we're still here, mark the thing as being hit, make it fade down again and subtract five from the score using minus equals. And finally, we want a new action to play whackbad.caf. So we'll say run the sk action dot play sound file named, and it's called whackbad.caf. Wait for completion, false. Just play it immediately and move on. Now when a player taps an evil penguin, the code is similar. The differences are that we want to add one to the score so it takes five correct taps to offset one bad one and run a different sound. But we're also gonna set the X scale and Y scale properties of our character node. So the penguin visibly shrinks in the scene as if they've been hit. So we're gonna say, uh, I'll copy the two lines of code here, not visible and, and is hit, and put that into they should have whacked this one comment. Boom. So that'll say, do nothing if they aren't visible and do nothing if they've already been hit. We'll then shrink them down slightly by saying uh, wax slot dot the character node dot x scale is equal to 0.85. So 85% of its regular size. And the same thing for its y scale. Make it slightly small in all dimensions. Then call wax slot dot hit. Add one to the score. And I'll copy this one here, playing wax bad dot calf. We're going to play instead regular whack.calf, the sound they should make when it hit a good penguin. Now, as you can see, there is some duplication in our code, which isn't ideal. You can see that uh, we get the wax slip regardless, which is great. If they're a friend and they are uh, not invisible and they are not hit, fine, uh, hit them and subtract five and so forth. The same code appears here though, if they're not uh, invisible and uh, not hit. Uh, so we want to actually share that code somehow rather than having it sort of copied and pasted twice. We can take this code uh, out of there and put it above the if like that and get it out of there as well. So we've shared that code across both scenarios, which is a much nicer way of working. And similarly, both these things call whackslot.hit here and here. 
and they both do exactly the same things. There's no reason having that same live code twice. We can take that out as well, and out of here, and instead share it up here. Boom. So no matter what kind of thing it is, it gets hit straight away. So we're taking the code out, get all that duplication out, and shared it instead. But there's still one more hiccup, which is down here. We're modifying the X and Y scale to be 85% of its regular size, uh, which is fine. It makes the penguin look smaller when it's been hit correctly. But since now we're potentially modifying the X scale and Y scale properties of our character node, we have to put them back to one inside the show method of the slot. So it resets to its regular size when it's being reshown again. So I'll go into waxlot.swift. I'll find its show method. Here we go. And there's a lot, lots of code here to do moving and so forth. Before that, before you move on the screen, we're going to say charnode.xscale is one. And charnode.yscale is one. Put it back to me, it's full regular size. At this point, the game's almost done. Thanks to the property reserve we put in early on in the game, it's now perfectly playable at least until pop-up time gets so low the game is effectively unplayable. To fix this final problem and bring the project to a close, we're going to limit the game to creating just 30 rounds of enemies. Each round is one call to create enemy, which means it might create up to five enemies at a time. First, go back to our game scene. We'll add a new property at the top here. We'll say var num rounds is zero. And every time we create enemies called, we're going to add one to the num rounds property. When it's greater than or equal to 30, we're going to end the game. Hide all the slots, show a game over sprite, then exit the method. So we'll scroll down to find create enemy. Here we go. Uh, so at this point, uh, this is where the enemy is being created. You can see it decreases pop-up time, shuffles the slots and so forth. Uh, before we assign pop-up time, we're going to write some new code just here. We'll say num rounds plus equals one. So we add one number of rounds created. And if num rounds is greater or equal to 30, we've made 30 rounds of enemies already, we'll hide all the slots by saying for slot in slots, slot dot hide. Then we'll add a game over sprite on top by saying let game over equals an SK sprite node with the image named game over. We'll place this thing at the position of CG point X512, Y384. We'll uh, layer it as a Z position of one, so it's above other things. Add child to the game scene straight away and return from the method. And that return is important because without that, it would call create enemy again after delay has been reached. So we're saying, stop calling create enemy now, we've hit our maximum. And with that, the game is now complete. I'll go ahead and press Command R, we can try playing out for real. And remember, if you're using the iOS simulator, please bear in mind, it's much harder to move a mouse pointer than it is to use your fingers on a real device. So don't try and change difficulty again and again and again, making it easier and easier, unless you're testing on a real device, because moving around is much, much slower than using your finger. So here we are, these are bad penguins, I'll shoot those. Uh, getting three points, four points, boom, eat that penguin. Uh, good ones, you lose five points, different sound plays, doesn't sink in as before. Good ones do sink in slightly to see, they just shrink just ever so slightly when they're hit. And I hit some more good penguins and a few bad ones. And hopefully, eventually, after enough has been shown, the game will end, hopefully soon. Have that, there you go. Boom, game over. 